Hello, I'm Richard Chambers, President and CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors. The number of high-profile corporate scandals in the past year makes it very clear to me just how much a toxic culture can undermine good governance and how it can ultimately destroy shareholder value. This makes it imperative for our profession to follow the risks and address the culture when carrying out our responsibilities. I believe many of my colleagues agree that the time has come to assess culture based on the positive response to my keynote address, When Culture is the Culprit, that I delivered at the IA's annual General Audit Management Conference earlier this year. This is especially gratifying considering that auditing culture will place a burden on most practitioners to operate outside of their comfort zones. One observation that I shared during my GAM presentation is that the relationship between management and internal audit can be a barometer of an organization's culture. Let's examine healthy and poor relationships between management and internal audit and what that says about the organizations in which they coexist. Ideally, internal audit should operate in an atmosphere that allows it to function independently. It should have the resources to do its job well. It must have separate administrative and functional reporting lines to the CEO and board or audit committee. It should have a clear and positive relationship with management that allows it to communicate openly and confidently without the fear of repercussions. And it should enjoy a similar relationship with its audit committee and board. This type of relationship means management has the confidence to have its actions and decisions routinely undergo scrutiny from an informed and independent outside perspective. It also reflects a C-suite that understands its role and that of the board and audit committee, and one that is eager to identify risk and control weaknesses and improve on those areas. It reveals a commitment to transparency from confident leadership that does not fear that its actions fall outside of the lines of established risk appetites, business strategies, or ethics. Most importantly, it sets a tone at the top that signals unequivocally that doing things right are the hallmarks of its culture. Conversely, a poor relationship between management and internal audit reflects a culture that inhibits internal audit's ability to do its job. In this scenario, leadership shuns scrutiny and takes steps to obstruct or avoid feedback from others. Telltale signs include a poor attitude about internal audit. Here, management's typical response to internal audit's inquiries might be to circle the wagons and limit access to information. A carousel of chief audit executives. This is where management cycles through a number of CAEs, seeking one who is the most easily controlled. Pressure to change or hide findings. Management is making it pretty clear it doesn't want to hear the truth. Redirecting or misdirecting internal audit. Management manipulates the choice of audits based on an agenda other than one based on the organization's risk. Manipulating internal audit budgets. This is an underhanded approach that limits resources and staff, access to outside expertise, or travel so as to limit internal audit's ability to do its job. Limit internal audit's access to the board or audit committee. Here management wants to control internal audit's message to the board. Each of those conditions reflects a tone at the top that avoids accountability and transparency. This does not mean that an organization is operating unethically or illegally but it does suggest a fundamental disregard or misunderstanding of good governance. At the very least, it hints at an organization that has work to do on its culture. If your organization exhibits any of these red flags, internal audit should take steps to address them with management and the board. The sooner they are corrected, the less likely they will morph into more serious problems affecting the overall culture. It is important to remember that the relationship between management and internal audit is a two-way street. Just because there may be a disagreement or tension between the two does not mean that there's a problem with the organization's culture. Such problems may reflect that internal audit itself has a culture that fosters mistrust and friction. Under either circumstance, it is imperative for internal audit to constantly work to improve its relationship with management, the audit committee, and the board. The long-term success of the organization depends on it. I'm Richard Chambers, the President and CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors.